Dave Wharton from Whitby and gratitude. Dave is a builder by trade, but the real pride of his life is this little boat, the 26-foot Cobble or Cobble Gratitude. Cobbles are the traditional working boats of the fishing villages along the northeast coast of England. And Gratitude, which looks like a little Viking ship with a high prow and single square sail, is the latest in a line of craft whose design goes back a thousand years. Dave, his crew, Arthur, Nicky and Chris and Gratitude, are arriving in France for a renowned summer festival of traditional sailing boats. Cobbles traditionally worked off steeply shelving windy beaches, and once they were as common as the herring shoals they followed. Today, however, true wooden sailing cobbles have almost died out, and Gratitude, built with a grant from the English Tourist Board, could be their new beginning. Every two years, a splendid festival of traditional sailing boats is held somewhere in Europe. This time, it's at the fishing town of Duanonay in Brittany. For three summer days, this little Breton port turned back the clock. Today's boats were moved to make way for flotillas of old sailing and rowing craft from all over the world many of them still earning their keep. Sardine luggers, tunny men and Irish hookers, Falmouth working boats and Baltic traders, Dutch clippers, sloops, crabbers, trawlers, gigs and dories. Lovely lasting working boats out of a long ago working age. was largely financed by the French government and Douaninet itself, a nice French way of combining regional pride and tourism. As the invitation to the festival said, the idea is partly to allow the public a glimpse of the glorious maritime history of the world, to let them share a magnificent heritage. Spectators should become actors. With gratitude on full display, Dave Wharton needs little encouragement. She's a sailing couple. That's a boat from the northeast coast of England. She'd be called a, a coble in Northumberland, but in Yorkshire she's a cobble. And that's the area of the coast she was using from the River Humber to the uh, Scottish borders. The cobble's a unique boat because she's been evolved for the 160 mile of coastline on, that she works on, mainly from beaches. She's got a very high bow and when she's launched, she's launched on a pair of beach wheels into the sea, pushed by a tractor. This fine bow goes into the surf, and she can ride quite amazing on the shore winds to clear the beach. This bow comes in again when she returns to the beach, because she can turn head into the surf, and the same bow faces the waves while she, the sea drives her back onto the shore. And the sloping stern, which is like a big water skiing effect, runs right along until it runs in inches of water and right onto the beach. The deep bow goes into a very flat midship section which comes over very rounded sides which is called tumble home. And this tumble home is so that the boat can lean over further than she could with straight sides without the water coming on board. 
It also gives a nice grip for the uh, men to put the knees against when they're working lines and pots, when they're hauling gear. You didn't build it? Uh, no, you, you couldn't build this kind of a boat yourself because she's built without plans. You find a builder that can actually, that you trust, and then you go to him and you say, I want a boat of 26 foot. And so you must know that he's going to build you the right boat before you give him the order for it, you see. Just from pictures or...? Well, you go with pictures. In the olden days, they used to go with a piece of string, the length of the boat. They'd find a friend's boat that they liked, and then they would take a piece of string here, the fisherman, and a piece of string here, and they would go and say, this is what I want. Gratitude is similar to many of the cobbles you see on the Sutcliffe photographs, Victorian photographs from Whitby. And when you look at them and you see the way the fisher folk lived, she epitomises the, the life of the fisherman. She's exactly the same. They could have come down to her and would have recognised her. And that's what I wanted to have, you see. I wanted to be able to find out some of the history before it was lost. There were a few old men in the village then that could tell me about sailing cobbles. Now it's down to two or three. But they're too old to sail with you. They can't take you out and show you to sail the sailing cobble, but they can still remember sailing with the grandfathers, or one or two perhaps just being in command of a cobble. And you can tell the men who can do it because of, uh, there are certain things you've learned through sailing it that they mention, and then you know that they, they really did sail it themselves. They didn't hear about it being sailed. She's a very good little boat in bad weather. She uh, is a very buoyant little boat, but the bow, which is the uh, asset when the boat leaves the beach and goes into the surf, now becomes the enemy because it tries to take command of the gratitude, tries to make a broach, tries to make it a run to one side. This is why we have the deep rudder, which counteracts this and which helps you to keep the boat on a straight line. The, the rudder is very unique as it slopes forward and so when it hits the beach, if you come into the beach and get a little bit close, it jumps off rather than smashing the blade. Generally, she's set with a dip in lug slot. That means she carries no rigging apart from the halyard which hoists the sail. Every time you go about, this halyard must be swapped to the windward side. The sail taken completely down, removed round the mast. The tack of the sail on up to the front, hooked again. The sheets moved to the old opposite side of the boat and the ballast moved to windward again. So it's quite an operation. It can take three men, perhaps uh, nearly a minute. In rough weather, it would take a minute to come about. A 26-foot cobbler would have had a crew of three. That would be uh, one man looking after the halyard, sitting by there when it was windy, one man at the back steering, and when it was really fresh in an old boat, one man bailing fairly constantly. How they carried a three-man crew with all their equipment is something which uh, I still have to learn because uh, sailing gratitude, we find we need all the boat to do it. The good points of the gratitude are the simplicity of a rig. For a long tax out to sea, which a fisherman would do to run out to put his gear, it was a very efficient sail. The Luxel is a very efficient sail. But for working in harbours and estuaries where you need to come about a lot, it's not so good. So it's really an open sea sail. It's a sail you'd use when you're at sea for long distance sailing.
devant et barbu par derrière. Jamais il n'aura ma main barbue de cette manière. In South Australia, I was born. Heave away, all the way in South Australia, round Cape Horn. We're bound to South Australia. All the way, you rolling king. Heave away, all the way, all the way. You hear me sing. We're bound to South Australia. As I walked out one morning, fair heave away. All the way, it's there I spied Miss Nancy Blair. We're bound to South Australia. All the way, you rolling king, heave away. All the way, all the way, you hear me sing. We're bound to South Australia. When we're sailing in light winds. She's quite a heavy little boat being built with timber and the other boats can get past me quite nicely. And onto the wind, the modern boats can easily beat me. But on a nice day with a fresh breeze, especially if I can find them downwind of me so I have a good run onto them, I can give a lot of modern boats a surprise. The racing was amazing. There was no real contest in it. When you came to a boy, anyone would stand back and let you go around first. No shouting for water like in a normal yacht race. Everybody was having a really good time and there purely for the enjoyment. Never been born, we're bound to South Australia. All the way, you rolling king, heave away. All the way, all the way, you'll hear me sing. We're bound to South Australia. And she, you know, you wouldn't be then snagging like you could catch a crab, you'd have one pair of oars flying, you could just grow on them. Yeah. I reckon we're going to have a. Well, I think we're going to beat them again today. <laughs> I, th I think we've got really nice wind for us today, so I think uh, if you let us do it the same, this, that's no, the difference. I don't. Yes, they will. They will. They're going to bring all the big guys out today with, the <laughs> with their arms like Popeye. Well, you've got the muscle. <laughs> it took nearly two hours to do the first leg. We were watching them. We were yeah, but all the yeah, people that right. are paying the money to come are standing on the quay. So they see all the ships lined up, and then they know the wind picks up. And nobody's moving, so then they set off in the race. And there's quite an art in just in just being able to keep your position in that kind of way. Yeah. To be 
in Valne is just fabulous. The, the people, the atmosphere, the fact that everybody is there just because they want to love the boats, to talk boats, to listen to the music, maritime music, and be involved with a, a really fabulous festival. A lot of organization from a lot of different bodies. The kind of thing we could do with more in England, especially in the northeast of England, where we're lacking such uh, such gatherings. We don't have the vessels, but here we've got the French rebuilding ships, rebuilding working fishing boats, taking wrecks and rebuilding them. And we should be thinking about doing that on on our part of the coastline. <laughs> The Bretons were using their boats under sail until the last World War. Our sailing boats died out in 1914, and so it, it wasn't passed on the same. The tradition's very quickly lost when you don't have to earn a living by it. You forget it. So when I come to Duarne like this, I can see the set of the sails. Things which I, I look at the sails and I think, they're baggy, they can't be a proper set of sails. How can they sail? and the sail away from him. My sails are terrelene, and I think cut as, as a Lugsdall rig should be cut, but uh, I've learned a lot from being here in Duarne. All the boats here at the festival were all working boats once upon a time. They were used either as pilot gigs, they were used for oyster fishing, they were used for tunny fishing, and they all evolved from very simple designs. They all carried lug sails, gaff sails, or they just rode. And there's some fabulous ships here. And the Breton boats are just unbelievable to a person who's never been to Brittany before. I don't know what I can say about them. Uh, the sails hang there. I have beautiful sails. Their sails hang there. And they fly. They're just magic boats. They're just... I think it's because the culture of the sails lasted that much longer that they know every little wrinkle. In days of technology, basic ways of earning a living have been very quickly forgotten. And just being able to turn back to the sea and earn your living, no matter how primitively the little boats on the northeast coast, we still have some primitive ones. But it's important to keep tradition alive. It's important so the skills aren't lost. Once these skills are gone, you can never find them again.